So this is part of the Great Barrier Reef. Without question, it's my favourite place on our beautiful planet. We hear about the Great Barrier Reef almost every day in the media, and usually it's for all the wrong reasons. Certainly, the Great Barrier Reef is under pressure from climate change, from pollution and degraded water quality, and from coastal development. But tonight, I'm not here to talk about the bits of the Great Barrier Reef that are battered and bruised. I'm here to talk about the bits of the Great Barrier Reef that are still vibrant and healthy and beautiful and full of an amazing diversity of plants and animals. And there are certainly many of those places left on the Great Barrier Reef. So this is not a photograph of me, but I certainly know this feeling. When I dive on a Great Barrier Reef, there is such a sense of peace and tranquility and a sense of connection with nature. It is one of the most amazing experiences I've ever had anywhere in the world. So probably the part of the Great Barrier Reef that I love the most is the fish. This is a lionfish. It's one of one and a half thousand species of fish on the Great Barrier Reef of every imaginable size, shape, color, pattern, and behavior. And this is probably one of my favorites, the triggerfish. 20 years ago, I did a PhD in marine science on this family of fish studying their behavior, how they find mates, how they look after their eggs, how they fight over territory, find food and eat. And I still find them one of the most amazing and fascinating animals. This is a close relative of the triggerfish. This is a long-nosed filefish. And he eats nothing except hard coral, which is what you can see surrounding him. That little long nose of his is perfect for plucking polyps off the corals. So essentially this guy is looking at a bit of a smorgasbord in this photograph, wondering what to have for lunch. Another fish with a long nose is the trumpet fish, but in this case the trumpet fish uses his long body to blend in amongst the branches of the coral, and then he sucks up small fish using that long pipette-like mouth of his. And this is a face only a mother could love, the black-spotted pufferfish or dog-faced pufferfish. And these guys tend to be active mostly at night, and that big swollen belly of his is full of fragments of coral, which he bites off the living tips of the coral and digests away the tissue on the outside. Of course, the fish on the Great Barrier Reef don't just look amazing, many of them taste amazing as well. This is the coral trout, or coral grouper, and it is one of the most beautiful fish on the reef, but it's also an amazingly tasty fish. And in fact, this is probably the most highly sought after table fish from the Great Barrier Reef. Sharks, I think these are some of the most amazing animals we have on the Great Barrier Reef. A lot of people are frightened of sharks, but I think really that's more because of myth than anything else. I've done thousands of dives and seen many hundreds of sharks on those dives come very close to them and always just admired them for their beauty. One of my favorite things on the reef is the little creatures. This is a Christmas tree worm, so named because of the shape of its gills. And these things we're looking at are its gills, therefore extracting oxygen from the water. The body of the worm is actually in a tube buried down into the coral. And another thing I love on the reef is the abstract patterns. If you get up really close to things and have a look at the sort of patterns that you can see on a very micro scale, you see some amazing things. This is the skin of a starfish. And it is amazing to me how much this resembles an Aboriginal dot painting for its abstract beauty. Another great photographic subject for abstracts is the giant clam. This is the mantle of a clam. The clam sucks in water through one siphon, filters out food, and then jets the water out through this siphon that we're looking at. But the amazing thing for me is not just the biology, it is the incredible beauty of the abstract patterns. I also love the relationships between animals on the reef. Now, this little shrimp is blind, but it's great at digging. And the fish has very good eyesight, but can't dig. So they live together in a burrow. It's the shrimp's job to maintain the burrow. And the fish is the watchdog looking for predators. Another amazing relationship is between anemone fish and anemones. The tentacles of the anemones have stinging cells and any other fish would get eaten. But the anemone fish manages to fool the anemone into thinking that the fish is part of the anemone and the fish can touch the anemone without being stung and gains protection. 
These little fish are playing a much more dangerous game. They are staying close to the jellyfish for protection from predators, but they don't actually have any immunity from the stings of the jellyfish at all. And if they get too close and they touch the tentacles of the jellyfish, they will actually become a meal themselves. So it's a pretty risky strategy. Another example of animals living together on the reef is what we call the cleaner shrimps. This particular one is a banded coral shrimp. Now, cleaner shrimps pick off dead skin cells or parasites off the outside of the animals. And in this case, this one is giving a very good dental clean for this giant moray eel. A little known fact about the Great Barrier Reef is that uh, if you're in a bit of a rush and you're doing a scuba dive, you can actually get a manicure done while you're out there as well. These little cleaner shrimp will often quite happily clean your cuticles and your nails for you. And uh, can I say it's a great experience and it tickles a lot. Okay, I'm coming to the end of my talk and I've focused mostly on the small creatures of the reef. But I just wanted to, to end by saying, of course, there's a huge variety of big animals out there as well. This is a tiny little green turtle, but this is going to grow into 200 kilo adults. So there's a whole nother talk in big animals on the reef. So thank you very much for listening. I've tried to show you just a very small cross section of what's out there on the Great Barrier Reef, but I hope I've shared with you what an amazing place the Great Barrier Reef is. And I've helped you to understand why I love it so much and maybe encouraged you to love it as well. Thanks.